Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, where I show you how to make your money work for you. Through passive income sources, ways to find all these bonuses on your phone, and just some helpful tips here and there. Today's topic is a two-part series on house hacking a duplex. Now before I get into this, I have to let you know I am not a financial advisor, nor a professional on this topic. So do your own research before going down this investment strategy or anything else I talk about on my channel. So what is a duplex? Some of you know, some of you don't. A duplex is two units in one building, split up by a divider. Some are side by side, which most investors like those as there's more privacy and usually less problems, and some are up down. So you have your first floor and second floor. So why would anybody want to do this? Well, think about it this way. Go down all of your expenses that you have and what is your highest expense? I almost guarantee you it's your living expense, your rent or your mortgage. So if you buy a duplex, you live in one side and you rent out the other, if you do it right in some areas, you can actually get all of your living expenses, mortgage, insurance, taxes, and your utilities paid by your tenant next door. If that's not giving yourself a raise, I don't know what is. So what are some of the ups and the downs of doing this? There are so many deductions that you can make on your taxes by investing in real estate. What I just said before, your neighbor's paying your mortgage. It's paying for your house while you live in it. With an owner-occupied loan, you can get a better interest rate than you can if you bought this as strictly an investment property, which as an owner-occupied loan, if you don't have a lot of money, you can usually get an FHA loan at a 3.5% down payment. Now, with only putting down 3.5%, you will have to pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. It's pretty much just a high-risk insurance as anyone that puts less than 20% down on a loan is stuck paying PMI. Now, this could range from 0.5% to 1% extra monthly on your loan, which if you're buying real estate in an expensive area can make a huge difference. And another plus, well, your tenant's right next door. Cons, your tenant's right next door. If you got a great tenant, this is awesome. No problems at all. If you end up buying a duplex with a tenant already there and find out they're not a good tenant, this could be a major problem. Or if you put a tenant in the property and they turn out not to be a good tenant, also a problem. Now, when placing a tenant, you wanna do a thorough background check and have criteria in place when selecting a tenant so that you're putting in someone will probably be a good tenant. Another one that could be a pro or con. You're a landlord now. So some people, this is not going to be a problem at all. Now others aren't really too thrilled about confrontation and having to deal with problems. As a landlord, you will have to deal with problems here or there, whether you have great tenants or bad tenants. Sometimes things break, you're going to have to fix them. Sometimes there's an issue, you're going to have to resolve it. That's just part of living in a duplex and running out the other side. Now you have to weigh out the pros and cons if that practically free living is worth it to you. Also, you have to be way more responsible when owning a duplex. Think about it this way. If something breaks in your house, sometimes you can just put that off and deal with it. It's your property. Now, if something breaks in the tenant side of the duplex, especially if it's something that's needed to live, you have to get that fixed. So you need money in reserves to fix any problems that may occur. So those are some of my pros and cons in part one of this video. More to come in part two. So what else do you need to think about? Now that you have this idea in your head, you need to find out where you wanna live. Some areas, it's a lot harder to find duplexes than other areas. You see a lot of duplexes in lower income areas. There are duplexes in nicer areas, but those usually don't pop up on the market that often. And when they do, they're pretty expensive. So you need to find out what your comfort zone is, what your search criteria is, now, how much room do you need? Are you single? Are you a couple? Are you in your early 20s? Do you need space? Do you have a lot of stuff? You need to know if you need to find a duplex with a two bedroom, one bath, a three bedroom, one bath, a one bedroom, one bath, or if you're willing to live in the smaller side and run out the nicer side to maximize cash flow. This all comes down to how comfortable are you and what do you need? Then you gotta figure out how much money do I need to buy a duplex in the area I wanna buy? This is where the most important part of any investment property or home buying comes in, period. You need to learn your market. You need to find out what a good average and bad deal is in the area you're trying to buy. Now, you might think, well, I'm gonna live in this place for 10, 15, 20 years forever, who cares? Well, guess what, life happens. Sometimes you may need to move, something might happen where you need to sell that house. If you're upside down, meaning your duplex has a loan on it, which is higher than what you can sell it for, you might be spending money in order to sell your place. That's never a good thing. So you need to be smart and make sure you're getting yourself into a good deal when buying a duplex. Now, what are some good ways of going about this? Well, call around to some realtors and find some realtors that work well with investors and are willing to work with investors. Some think that they're willing to work with investors and you start working with them and realize that they've either never worked with an investor or they don't want to work with investors. 
Usually someone that is buying a duplex or trying to find a good deal is going to be looking at a lot of properties. You will more than likely not buy the first house that you look at. If you do, well, congratulations, or you might have found yourself a bad deal. Now these realtors can set you up in what's called a drip. This gets the MLS, which is the multiple listing service, sent to your email every morning. All the new listings, the present listings, the price decreases, so you see them every single day. That way you can jump on a deal when you see it pop up. Now as this is mainly on buying a duplex and house hacking it, anything four units or down qualifies for conventional lending, meaning you can use that without having to get a commercial loan. So if you find a quadplex, meaning four units in one, live in one and rent out the other three, you could more than likely be cash flowing and actually making money to live in your place. Now, if you're a brand new investor, probably better to start with a duplex and see if you like investing in real estate before moving on to another purchase. Now, if you can save up and put 20% and put down on your loan, you could avoid PMI. That way you're not paying for that high risk insurance. Plus you have equity in the property right off the bat. So if something does come up and you have to get rid of this property quick, you can usually do that without having to come out of your pocket. Okay, so now you feel like you've researched your market pretty good. You know what a good average and bad deal is in your market. You have a drip set up for your real estate agent. You've been looking at duplexes for 30, 60, 90 days. The next step, you need to call around to a few lenders and get pre-approved for a loan. So when you get pre-approved for a loan, that shows you how much you can spend on a property. And usually realtors don't wanna show you properties until you're pre-approved so they know what your price range is. There's no point of wasting their time if they're showing you duplexes going for $300,000 when you can only afford one for $150. Congrats, you found your duplex. You found the one that you want to put an offer in. You love everything about this place. You're ready to put in an offer. Well, we're going to continue this in part two of this series.